Hey fam, we are back to talk about the free response on your uh, unit six review. So just like in the second part of the multiple choice, um, I'm not really gonna go in depth on the solutions for these free responses. The ones that are new, that that are ones that we have like never even thought about before, I will give a little bit a little bit of clarification. But for most of them, I'll just show you my solutions, and then you can email me or come see me if you need anything clarified. Just like I said before, don't wait until right before you take the test to get clarifications. Whether you're in my A day or your or my B day you have at least Monday to get any of your questions answered that you need. So just email me and I will figure out a way to get you a detailed explanation before your test. So please do not hesitate to ask questions and get uh, the help that you need. So 39 is uh, similar to what you did in your overview here but I just added in the extra step of finding the margin of error. So here you had to know to find the margin of error, but on this paper, I added it in just to give you a little bit more help when you find your confidence level. Um, 40, I should have done a better job letting you know that this is a graph of the sample data. So this refers to this bullet point on your overview. If n is less than 30, check if the population is normal, and to do that, you look at your sample distribution. Notice here that I'm stating that the population is normal. If n is greater than or equal to 30, central limit theorem applies, and I am mentioning that the sampling distribution is normal. So if your sample isn't big enough, you need to know that the population is normal. If it is big enough, we know that our sampling distribution is normal, so that is enough. Number one, I'm hoping was easier for you guys after the multiple choice questions that ask you to evaluate a claim. So the pet association has a claim of 39% and all you need to do is check to see if that value is in the interval. If it is, then the claim is plausible. So part A on number two, I'll just hopefully alleviate some of the burden in studying and let you know that you will not be tested, you will not be asked a question like part A, but it is something worth thinking about and worth understanding. The very last uh, unit that we do before your AP exam is a whole unit on this idea. So describe how you could have bias. Bias is similar to an error. Describe how you could end up getting a sample that doesn't represent the population. So in this case, heads of households could lie about whether or not they graduated high school. If, if you're going to lie, obviously you're going to lie and say, yes, I graduated, which would result in an estimate for the population that is too big. So it would be an overestimate. Three, we talked about um, in class how when we have to graph the sample data, the graph that I prefer to use is a box plot. And one of the biggest reasons or most important reasons that I prefer that is because a box plot will tell you if you have outliers. So in this case, when it asks you to um, make the box plot for these two uh, animals, you actually have to do 1.5 times IQR and verify if there are true mathematical outliers. This is a previous free response problem, so this was on one of the actual exams. 
in order to get full credit, at least on the graph, you had to make sure that you labeled which box plot was which. So I abbreviated the modern tie dog and I abbreviated the golden jackal. So to get full credit on this part of the problem, you needed to show your calculations for outliers and you needed to make sure that your graphs were appropriately labeled. The bottom part I think is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to know if you can estimate the mean length for the modern tie dog, then what you are doing is checking the conditions. So I went through and checked the three conditions that we need to check in order to do that. What I've been noticing is I've gone through and graded your can you do's uh, for this unit is that lots of you guys are not um, using this framework to do your confidence intervals. So last year I taught confidence intervals this way to check your conditions using bullet points and then make your confidence interval. So in the free response, because so many of you guys were already doing it like this, instead of like this, I decided to do that on my free response for this review. Either way is fine as long as you check all conditions. Make sure that you're using an appropriate amount of space to do these. Like some of you guys are, are jamming this all in one space, so your grader has to seek out the answer and when you're having to grade hundreds of papers it doesn't necessarily inspire or motivate your grader to give you the benefit of the doubt and give you partial credit so spread your work out make it easy to find if you prefer this bullet point method then that is what you should use one other thing that i should mention is that I didn't think that you needed to check, like explicitly write down that the sample was random in order to do a confidence interval. And as I was going through and doing the problems on your test, I realized that you do. So for all of my free response problems, I checked the random condition and you guys also need to check the random condition. Luckily, that one's the easiest one to check. B is new. Um, I don't know how they would expect you to answer this question unless you have seen something similar, but essentially we can't use this to um, investigate an individual person because what we're estimating is a population average. So I think that this response is, is pretty self-explanatory. So this gives us information about the population average. That takes into consideration everybody in the population. It does not give us information about an individual person because of sampling variability. Each person is probably going to differ from the next one on how many steps they actually take a day. So we wouldn't want to use this to estimate an individual or investigate an individual amount. This is another one of the questions that the AP board really loves. And once again, this is a previous AP free response question. So this was on a previous exam. You have to know more than one chapter to do this. Also, I think that this element where they have you calculate the proportion of crows that are classified as unhealthy, but then ask you to find a confidence interval for a mean could be very confusing. So just make sure that you're being really careful about what they're asking you. Part A specifically wants a proportion. Part B specifically wants a mean. When it says all conditions for inference have been met, that means that you can just construct your interval. You do not have to do this thing. 
you can completely skip that and go straight to your calculation. I'm hoping that C is easy for you at this point after the overview and the multiple choice. I'm hoping that this is becoming a little bit more automatic for you. Same with D. I think that this um, margin of error might be a typo uh, because we're going from a sample of 23 crows to all of a sudden needing a sample of 25,000 crows. And that margin of error just seems really, really small compared to the numbers up here. So I'm wondering if that was supposed to be 0 0.20. I'm not sure, but I got, I got a whole lot of crows for that one. Okay, this, so at this point, I think all of these are previously released or previously given questions that have been released for you guys to practice. So we um, build a confidence interval for a proportion and they specifically say proportion in the prompt. Conditions have been met so you can just calculate the proportion. So we think between about 19% and 39% of people will fill their water cup with soda. So they ask for a water cup and then they cheat and they fill it with soda. So that is our um, estimate. Well, then they go on to say that they think that each customer that does this costs them 25 cents. So they give you a specific amount of customers and want you to now use this confidence interval to make an interval of the actual cost that these customers generate. So I'm explaining what our confidence interval told us. And then here, I'm, I'm mostly writing this down for you guys, but if I had time, I would write this on my test. So 18, we know that between 18.8 .8 and 38.7% of our customers will do this. So if we have 3,000 customers, 18.8% .8 of that is 564. Well, each of those guys costs us 25 cents. So we do 564 times the 25 cents. That gives us a lower bound of $141. Uh, using the same reasoning, I get an upper bound of $290. So these customers in the month that was given, in the month of June, cost this business between $141 and $290. Just by asking for a water cup and then filling it with soda. How interesting. This is why I like stats. Because this interests me. But I'm, I might just be a boring person. So... Down here, these are the intervals you would get if you rounded differently than me. And if I'm being honest, I can't remember how I rounded. Like, I think that one of them is if you didn't round, you used all four digits. And then the other one is if you only used two digits. So if you use 19% and 39%, and then if you used 18.83 and 38.67. So these three values would earn you full credit. If you got something besides these three, you should check with me and have me see where you went wrong. So you don't have to have these two. These are just what I got with different rounding. And then this one, I don't think that this was a previous question, but the um, the one problem that I think is important that you understand or part of the problem is B. Um, a is just your regular confidence interval for a proportion. It specifically says in the prompt you're working with a proportion. I go through and I check all my conditions, including the random condition, calculate my interval, interpret my interval. Now, 
you when you get this question on your test because you will absolutely have one of these it's probably not going to be the wilmer amina carter high school who names their high school that many names it's a lot of names guys but um you will get build a confidence interval for a mean build a confidence interval for a proportion so your yours has to look from here down exactly like mine it has to include every single thing that i have you cannot leave anything off you have to check every condition you have to write what i have in red and you have to conclude it has to be all of these it doesn't got to look exactly the same but you cannot skip any part of this i wish i could say specific student names so that you know not to skip anything, but I can't, probably get fired. So, um, same for this one, this is a confidence interval for a mean. So here you're doing one for a mean, here you are doing one for a proportion. On this one with the activity tracker, you have to put everything that I put. It is necessary. You will lose points. If you're missing any of this, any of these, any of this stuff. Then the bottom part, so we, we need to be clear about what um, we're looking for. So the, the student council will ban the plastic bottles if more than 50% of kids um, favor the ban. Which means, so I, I wrote that and then answered and then realized we, you might need a little bit more clarification. So if we ban, if more than or a majority of, not more than, a majority of the students agree or favor the ban, that means that every single value in our interval needs to be greater than 50%. That's the only way we could say a majority favors the ban. Well, our interval contains 48% and 49% and even 50%. And 50% is not a majority. 50.01% is. So this does not provide evidence to support the ban. We have plausible values that are less than or equal to 50%. If you are having troubles with this, you need, you need to email me, you need to call me, you need to send me a smoke signal, a text message, do something so that we can get this figured out. Okay, that's it. I gave you a lot of problems because I wanted to give you a lot of practice so that hopefully these exam scores will be better than our last two. The only way that's going to happen is if you guys put in the time to study and be successful. Um, we're, we're getting to the point now where everybody that's left in the class pretty much is capable of passing the exam, and it's just a matter of whether or not you're willing to put in the time. So please put in the time. If you have any questions, as I've said a million times, please get those questions answered before you show up to class to take the test. The five minutes before the test is not going to be enough time for me to fix the misunderstandings that you have. So please get a hold of me. Okay, that's it. Love you guys. Please study. Love you.